This is a video about building a simple thing in Tinkercad and using Tinkercad as a drafting space. We're not going to 3D print this thing, but we are going to design it three-dimensionally using Tinkercad. Now, with all of the challenges we do, I ask that my students begin with a plan. It's really important so they know what they're doing, so they know when they're kind of done. Plans evolve. So I was thinking about something called the tap trumpet because I'm going to create a musical instrument that uses touch sensitive spots and connects to scratch using either a micro bit or a makey makey. Now, as I started drawing this, I discovered this was what I actually wanted and it wasn't this. It's kind of this. So then I redrew it and I've got my music box and from the top view you can see there's a cone a box and a number of buttons and then from the side view you can see that the cone kind of comes out of the box. I'm thinking about one of those old phonographs, the gramophones, the big big kind of amplifier cone that it had. So that's where I'm starting from. I'm going to go to Tinkercad. I've got my plan and I'm going to start a new project. So I'm going to click new and it should bring me to a new project space. Once I'm in the new project space, I'm going to start building my shape. Now, that base shape was a box, so I can bring in my box shape. And I can adjust it to look kind of like I want it to look. It's giving me my dimensions as I work. It seems plenty big to do what I need it to do. That's moving it up and down. I want to actually change the size. Like, I want to make it kind of shorter. So I have to grab one of the top there we go nope 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 I can make it shorter this way so I pull the white one from the bottom and then I bring this back down to the top and it's touching ground when there I believe no now what I want to do next is I want to add that big cone so let's see if I have a cone shape. I do have a cone shape. That is awesome. So I'm going to drag my big cone into there and I'm going to see that it's not really that big of a cone. So I'm going to make it a bigger cone and I'm going to make it bigger round. Now it's not in the place I need or the orientation I need. So I'm going to click on this arrow right here. Command Z can bring me back to where I was. I'm going to click on this rotation arrow right here and I'm going to spin that all the way around to negative 180 so I know that it's upside down and I'm going to bring it over here and put it in position. Now it is not yet what I need it to be because it is still completely solid. So to model this correctly I'm going to try to make this a hollow shape. I'm going to press control C and copy this shape. Once I've copied it, I'm going to paste it in. I'm going to take this pasted one and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to take 47 down to let's say 40. And I'm going to change this one to 40 also. And I'm going to define this as a whole. Now I'm going to click both of these and I'm going to use my align tool to line them up so they are centered on each other. I'm going to flip over to the top and then I'm going to line them up here so they're centered on each other. And then I'm going to click group which turns, now we can see that red dot at the bottom of my cone. So now I've got that modeled correctly. I need to design the buttons I'm going to use. So I'm no longer working on a line. I can unclick those shapes. And now I'm going to think about the buttons that I want to create. These are what people are going to touch to actually play the instrument. To make life easy on myself, I'm going to click Work Plane. And I'm going to click right here because that's where I'm going to put the button. Now when I drag this star in, it's on that work plane and I just have to make it an appropriate size. So 
I'm going to zoom in a little bit to make it easier to move this thing around. Now, if I like that button and I want to create all of the other buttons just like that, I can simply by copying and pasting right now. So that's duplicate, that's paste. If I duplicate and then paste, whoops, wrong thing duplicated. So we're going to control Z and take that out. So I just did a copy on that. And then I'm going to click paste. All right, we can just move it over. Zoom out a little bit. Whoops. If you're zoomed out, it's hard to grab it without resizing it. So I'm going to zoom back in. So I can grab one of them and I'm going to undo because I don't want this one to be different than the others. Now I'm going to do something that I think of as a, a fairly lazy trick if I can get it to work. Okay, so I click a star. I'm holding shift. I click the other star. I've got them both. I'm going to copy that in both. And I'm going to paste them both. Now, if I want to make sure they all line up, I can click all of them. I can click the Align tool, and I can line them all up like that. Now, I just redefine the work plane as the standard work plane. This isn't looking too bad, but I might want to write something on it, and I can do that using text and numbers. If I bring a text block in, actually if I bring that text block in, I want to define the work plane first and then bring the text in. And I can change this here. You can go ahead and change the color because we're not 3D printing this, so we don't have to worry about the fact that we can't make different colors what we are going to be creating these out of paper and cardboard. So this is the beginning of what you're working on. And if there's an aspect of this that you want cut out with a laser or a cutting machine, we may be able to do that. When I am all done with my design, I am going to export it. And I'm going to export it as an OBJ file. And I'm going to upload that. And I'm going to put my name in there. Dr. P. And if I look in there, I'll see that there's this tinker.obj. That should immediately rename to your name, your instrument. Then you're going to take that, and if you're in my class, you're going to share it to our Google Classroom site. I'll have a spot for you to put it there. If you're not, you can use that OBJ file in any number of softwares to help visualize what your object is, or if you want to take a um, you know 3D print a, an object, you could. Thank you very much.